Hi, I'm Jack from Jack Bell's Photography and today I'll uh, be talking about my experiences with the Nikon Z6. Now I decided last year to upgrade from the D7200 which is here to the Z6 but there was a lot of negative coverage about the Z6 which initially put me off and then I saw um, some videos from two channels, one the Mon Monochrome Memoirs. He's a wedding photographer, he gets great results with the Z6 and gives a lot of useful tips. So <clears throat> that obviously suggested the Z6 is uh, not a bad camera. And then Bob Holmes, who's a National Geographic a photographer, I saw a couple of his videos. Uh, he, does, he takes great photos and he started using the Z6 as part of his kit. So and that persuaded me to uh, go for the Z6 and I've been using it now for a few months, just about two and a half months. Uh, <clears throat> I do underwater photography but I haven't bought an underwater housing for it yet. I'm still trying to decide which way to go. But I do a lot of travel, landscape and I do general parties. So I'm not a professional photographer, I'm very much a, a keen enthusiastic amateur. So here's my experience of the Z6 so far. Now, uh, I purchased the Z6 with the 14 to 30 f4 lens, uh, the Z lens, which is lightweight, which I'm using for filming. Uh, I also reused the, um, the 60mm uh, micro lens. This is with the FTZ adapter, and I use the 105. So the 105 and the 60 micro lenses are both full frame lenses and I've been using those a lot with the FTZ adapter and that's basically replaced my D7200 for most of my photography uh, but prior to that I was using the um, Tokina 10-17mm wide-angle lens the 35mm DX f1.8 which is a very good lens and also the 60 so th those were the sorts of lenses I was using before um, and now I'm using a very high quality uh, kit so what I'd like to do is go through some of the, the key features. So starting off with the image quality and the colours. So I, I find actually that to be superior for the Z6 when compared to the D7200. So, so the colours are fantastic and despite the DxO score being better for the D7200, I actually found the Z6 to be superior. So I don't know if it's to do with the low light capability or the, the full frame sensor showing more detail but certainly I, I used to import photos with one of my presets which I designed myself into Lightroom and I had to stop doing that because I found it was overdoing the, uh, the shadows. So I, I find now my perception is uh, that I get more detail in the shadows and the highlights than before. Um, it's also better in low light for sure. Um, so here are some of the photos. So this one is a landscape. So uh, the, the, the next group of photos are all using the new 14 to 30 f4 lens. Um, this one's actually two photos handheld, taken handheld at one two hundredth of a second f11 at 14 millimeters, and I stitched them together using Lightroom. Uh, and you can see what a good job uh, the, uh, the Lightroom is in the stitching together because it looks fairly seamless and there's a, this was taken at midday so a high contrast scene but you can see how much detail there is in the photo then the, the next photo is taken up Island uh, I was here with the family on the trip so I took some photos and this is the iconic scene with the rock and you can see there's a huge amount of detail in, in the rock here. Again, taken at uh, noon, uh, and this is a high contrast, uh, needs very good dynamic range, and the Zex 6 has done fantastically. This uh, photo was taken on a trip around the island. Again, a high contrast scene with very bright sun, uh, but the Z6 has done a very good job. The, the colors are very vibrant. You can see the red of the paddle, the kids in a boat, the greens, the blues, and a lot of detail from the 14 to uh, 34 lens. Uh, the final photo in this sequence was a very high contrast. It's taken at one of the resorts, so very bright background, 
and the foreground element on the right was actually quite dark and I've been able to bring up a, a lot of the detail in the shadows and this was actually handheld at half a second at f4 so I was actually trying to blur out the background a little bit and I think the Z6 has done a fantastic job. The, another key benefit I think is the EVF. Now the EVF I find is similar to looking at the, uh, the iMac 27 inch uh, 5K screen. It's, it's fantastic. It's made a huge difference to my photography as I can see the um, the settings, the effect of the settings on the photo and I can choose the settings I want to try before I even take the shot uh, and I find that's been a, a great benefit uh, I no longer have to chimp, guess the settings, change them, chimp, change until, I, until I'm happy so that process is much much faster um, so the key benefit there is I'm able to focus on composition uh, and creativity uh, so I, I still take probably a similar amount of photos but now I, I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately changing the settings and the angles and everything um, because uh, I'm, the, uh, the, the live view in the EVF um, I, I can see what effect those settings are, have already um, the in camera vibration reduction the in-body image stabilization equivalent of the Nikon has worked really well. Uh, I'm able to take really slow shutter speeds when required. Uh, I find about a third of the second is fairly reliable handheld and sometimes I can do better than that as you'll see in these example photos. So let's take a look at some of the photos. So this one is a, a third of a second and I was actually standing in water and able to see the waves rolling in. Um, and this is the 14 to 30 at 21.5 uh, and ISO 50. So uh, I, I could actually see all the colours and decide on the composition I wanted to take. Uh, at another site, uh, this smoke came in, so I handheld uh, this were at uh, a sixth of a second F13, uh, and I took two photos and stitched them together in Lightroom, and this is handheld. The Next photo is of a fish farm, and this one's actually uh, a one second exposure handheld, and you can really see the effect on the water. Uh, I took a, a few photos at one second, and uh, basically the people were fishing, so not moving very much. So I got away with that one for the people, but the rest of the scene is sharp and, and in focus. Again, uh, ISO 50. And the last one, I was playing around at the resort, uh, uh, you, you just saw the photo of the, the waterfall in the background. Uh, this one's taken with a two second exposure, an F11. Um, so it is possible to do as slow as two seconds, it, it's, it's very difficult to do it, so you're going to have to take quite a few photos. So if you, if you want to go down slower than a second, I would suggest using a tripod. <coughs> Excuse me. The autofocus, the EVF and screen use the, um, the same functionality on the Z6. So on the D7200, you've got completely different performance whether you're using the screen or the optical viewfinder. Here it's exactly the same. And I find that uh, really useful when trying to do low angle shots or when I'm trying to hold the camera above my head to take a, a high up shot. Uh, I find the screen very useful. I've set the touch screen so I can set the focus by touching the, the selected point. Um, I've turned off the ability to take the photo uh, by touching. I just want to uh, set the focus. I can then change the composition. Uh, I use back button focus, the F1 button to focus, and then I take the photo. So I find that process works really well, low down or high up, and is much, much easier than with the D7200. So let's have a look at some of the shots I've used uh, using the back screen. Um, this is the 14 to 30 at 30 millimeters, use, uh, ISO 200. So this waterfall was actually quite dark, but there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of detail in the photo, and the shutter speed is one third of a second, 
and you can see the movement in the water. So that's come out really well. And this is handheld. The, there were a lot of people in the pool below, so what I did to take this shot was to hold it above my head and I touched the, uh, the part of the screen with the people in to focus, make sure the focus was them, asked them not to move too much, and I was able to take this photo quite easily in a third of a second. A couple of photos with a tripod, so when my friends were diving I took uh, my Z6 and tripod and this one is f4 at 30 millimeters and 30 second exposure and you can see the stars quite clearly, the moon, Venus is in the shot and the, the lights from the resorts weren't overdone. Uh, taking the photo the other way when it was uh, much darker so this is a nighttime scene again f4 30 second exposure and the stars are really bright and you can see the torch lights of the uh, divers in the middle of the screen so that's really good in general the autofocus despite the reports and the, the bad reviews I found actually to work very well for stationary and slow moving objects certainly uh, I, I find it as good as the D7200 and the ability to easily select focus points with a joystick or by touching the screen uh, is a big improvement. I tend to use single point AFS for landscape or stationary subjects. AFC with uh, either a single point or a dynamic area autofocus uh, when there's some movement in the subject that works very well. And when I've got people uh, in, the, in the shot then I use the auto area autofocus and then uh, that uses the eye autofocus uh, or the face uh, autofocus. And those have actually been quite transformational uh, for when I've been doing parties or portraits because uh, I found them to work very well in detecting the face or the eye. Uh, occasionally at the, uh, in low light settings at a party I have to click the on button and then that lights up the central square and then I can set my focus point and then recompose very quickly so the process is very quick uh, when there's a failure in that but actually um, I, I find it much easier to compose uh, individuals or group photos or portraits using the Z6 uh, rather than the D7200 so here are some of my port portraits uh, the first one uses the, is a wide angle portrait so I used the Godox 350N flash to fill in uh, the portrait uh, whilst keeping the background well exposed. That's taken f14 and 1 200th of a second uh, and ISO 100. So the eye is very much in focus, as, uh, the, the, the face is very much in focus because of the f14 and that, that, that was quite easy to take. Um, using the 105 lens I took a few portrait photos and again uh, when you're fairly close to the subject the eye autofocus works very very well and is clearly in focus. Uh, this one I took at f2.8 so that to blur out the background and actually the front of this pool is blurred as well but the eye is very much in focus as well as the face. Uh, again this one uh, uh, uses the 105 micro lens and f7.1 because so I wanted to make sure uh, both girls were in focus uh, and uh, this one I was experimenting with an off-camera flash using a trigger so that's the Godox trigger um, and that's worked, worked very well with, with the system <coughs> so some extras what I found the the movie mode so I'm taking this uh, using the uh, high D, uh, the Nikon 14 to 30, and the Z6, um, and there's you can't hear any motor noise, and the focus works very very well. It's much better than the D7200, which I found that that uses live view, and the focus is very limited. Uh, there's a dedicated switch which you can set to photo or movies and it remembers the settings for each one so I find that's great. You, there's also some user pre-settable options on the main uh, command uh, mode dial uh, U1 to U3. I don't use that so much but the useful thing about that is that you can independently set the, for that for photos and videos. So you've actually got six user settings not three if, you, if you're doing um, videos. 
The menus are uh, very good, uh, they, they follow the Nikon system. The big plus about the Z6 is this allows you to get into the Z6 much easier because you'll be familiar with the menu system and you've got a touch screen so you can navigate the menus using that rather than uh, using the joystick or the up or down buttons. So that makes it easy to learn and very intuitive. Also, the size and the weight of the system is lighter than the D7200 and, and I would guess much lighter than the, uh, let's say, full frame um, DSLR like the D850. Now, there are some issues. So, for the autofocus, uh, I found for fast moving subjects that that doesn't track quite so well. Uh, and I did try uh, setting the focus uh, on the focus plane. But when, the, when, when, the, when you've got sports action or something like that, I, I didn't find that to work very well. Also, uh, the eye autofocus needs to be fairly close. Uh, to the subject to work reliably. Uh, I've recently seen a video on the Sony and the uh, Canon comparing those to the Nikon. And actually, the, the Nikon in distant terms is comparable to the Sony and not as good as the, um, the Canon. Uh, but in, in, in scenarios, the, the Sony does seem to be ahead of the Nikon in that respect. I find the Nikon to be very usable, but it, these are both areas of improvement. Uh, the battery life is not as good on the Z6 as uh, the D7200. The plus is that it uses the, the, the same batteries, so I, I didn't have to buy any spare batteries, I just used the ones I've already got. Uh, and actually for a day shooting, a normal day shooting, uh, a battery works pretty well for that. So it's not terrible, but certainly not as good. The initial cost of the lenses is higher, so the Z lenses do, do seem to be a very high quality. Uh, but um, the in uh, initial cost is certainly higher and I'd expect as the system matures the cost will come down a little bit. Now uh, there's no inbuilt flash on a Z6 so I actually bought a lightweight flash the Godox uh, uh, 350N and that's uh, light and portable. It works pretty well in, uh, for parties and uh, when it's dark and not very good for filling flash in bright conditions. The, my SB700 works very well though and I didn't have to do anything to enable high speed sync, that worked automatically. So that's a big plus. If you shoot a lot of movies, you're probably going to need to upgrade your uh, computer as well uh, because the files are big uh, and it takes quite a lot of computer power to, to use. So here are some photos some action photos. So this is actually ISO 8000, so it was actually quite dark for the volleyball game, the lighting wasn't great, and they used the 105mm lens, uh, and I had to experiment a little bit. I was able to get some good photos, but generally the action, uh, the autofocus didn't follow the action very well. Uh, when I was out with the family at Kambuhai Falls in Sikiho, uh, there were people uh, using a swing to jump into the uh, pool below the waterfall. What I did was I, I would set the focus point on, on the person when they let go of the swing, so they're stationary at this point. And this is using the 60mm uh, f6.3 and 1 400th of a second. So the person is in focus. But what I found is as they dropped, the focus would switch as in this one to the waterfall behind it. So you might have to use a smaller aperture for these sorts of photos. Um, the last one, the focus is clearly on the waterfall behind. Uh, but actually, because I used the, uh, oh, I, I closed down the aperture, um, then it's, it's worked okay. So the, the, this, this one's acceptable. Um, but if you really want the focus on the, on the subject, you're gonna have to uh, focus, select your focus on the plane. So one of my conclusions, well, uh, I much preferred using the Z6 to my uh, D7200. The EVF and IBIS, the in-body uh, vibration reduction, is certainly transformational. Uh, means I can focus on composition, uh, I can focus on creativity, I can do low shots much easier, high shots much easier, use the screen or use the EVF, it's far better. It's meant that I don't need to use a tripod so much. 
So when I know I'm doing landscape photos on really long exposures, then I'll take my tripod. For general travel, then I no longer take my tripod. And that's made my kit uh, more compact and lighter. The Z lens that I've got is very high quality. That's a major upgrade to the Tikina 10 to 17 millimeter lens. Uh, and the fact that I'm now using higher quality lenses reflects in the image quality. So the kit is definitely smaller and lighter. And the most important point is that the image quality is superior compared to the D7200. Well, I hope you find this uh, video useful. Uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.